I was sitting there, unable to move in the fear of dying. I was watching at the candle, just waiting it for it to burn out and for darkness to consume me. As I was looking around, I realized that I have to move on. So I gathered my courage and I stood up. Fifth of June, 1839. I feel the need to continue this journal, even though it was intended for my journey to Africa. This must be something very important. I just know it. I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together, but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change color, shape, and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. I approached the subject with care and we discussed how rocks change form. He told me about the nature of glass how it eventually collapses on itself, like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. There's the problem. Gotcha. Walter came from. Oh God, I'm wet. Oh. <gasps> 
Oh God! What is that? Just don't look back! Don't look back! Maybe it's some kind of fish or something. How can I not see it? Oh 
going to remember how to do this. Uh, twist and turn and... Yes! Let's get out of here. Oh god! Don't look back! Don't look back! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Go! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Ascending room. Will it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum of Regent's Park has one. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer, and in the other direction.
journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? Oh, I know this place. This is where I was sleeping. Boy, I've turned this place apart. of July, 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. July 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, recovered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? Ooh. Oh, my favorite. Nice wine. something looking in here, but what? Ugh, damn it. Let's see. Push it, twist it. Ugh. No, it's a different lock. Crowbar. the key of the machinery. I remember. Oh 
god. Oh god. Fourth of July, 1839. It's done. The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. The key. Where is that key? Oh, oh good spot. Oh, thank God, there it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it then. Yes, it is. Oh god! Just... To my most trusted student and friend, Johan Weyer. The most remarkable thing happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs I have been looking for the last 20 year odd years. 
It is inexplicable as it highly dreams described in the Hortus Conclusus. It was as it was told about. An underground mythical temple crowned with the unearthly artifact. The orb was uh, big enough to fill my cupped hands, and the texture was smooth and jagged, its color washed while rich. Contrast is not enough to describe its nature, it was an impossibility, an artifact paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Alstad, investigating one of the antiquated trails when I finally found the cavern. I went inside and suddenly I called verify the truth of this enigmatic artifact. They were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life. But it has also become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the ore from the place. I scrambled out from the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It beyond loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing at the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but fortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cry of pain echo through the valley, I felt such a tremendous sense of relief, thinking I would be spared. Suddenly a blue shimmering light engulfed me, and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through bleak surroundings, the trees had turned Sherlock black. With leaves of cinder, the ground covered in murky water. I pressed on through the drenched land as the glowing amber gave way to a rising wind and ran on me. I could hear planting screams in the distance and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground gasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had been carried miles away across the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The Guardian had taken the orb from me, but still until this day I fear its return. Sometimes I lay awake at night listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It, it has been nearly a decade since the day and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest and in ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realized I owe you truth about my visit to Elstad, your friend and mentor, Henrik Cornelius Agrippa. Bloody hell is Thunderbolt still out there? Alright. can do this. Genius Lupus Familius, 1658, April 12th. After a short study, it's clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in the dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger an endogenous response, causing the animals to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult Aww. to determine exactly where and what it is. 
but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic genesis. There is an inherent problem in harvesting this energy since the creature is born to die from exercise. I must refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. More experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human uh, beings are uh, able to produce the amount necessary. It might be their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that ultimately augments their experience of terror. What in the bloody hell is that? for the elevator. I better keep it.
July, 1839. Today, I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may in fact have inspired the Globus Cruciger, which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. should read up eight and down eight. Up eight and down eight. There we go. It's good. Pressure is good. Let's check others. every book I can find on the subject. While rich in legend and hearsay, my knowledge is lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia. He said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know, I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. What am I to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful, with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep.
tools that are missing. Let's check the rest of the area. Maybe I can find them. two upstairs. Their skin flayed as if boiled. I feel like I'm falling into myself. What's happening? Sir William Smith, Professor Taylor, now Dr. Tate. Is it following me? How can it not be? It's the damn thing I brought from Africa. Something is after me. I have no choice but to trust the Baron. He better know what he claims. If he is wrong, I suspect he'll regret it as well. So that's how I ended up here. Uh, oh. Basement. 